있습니다. 여러분 안녕하십니까. 4차 산업혁명과 지식재산권 제도의 미래를 주제로 한2017 지식재산국제심포지엄에 오신 것을 진심으로 환영합니다. 아, 이른 아침부터 바쁘신 일정에도 불구하고 오늘 이렇게 어, 이번 심포지엄에 참석해 주신 여러분들께 진심으로 감사의 말씀 전합니다. 네, 먼저 인사드리겠습니다. 저는 이번 심포지엄의 사회를 맡게 된 아나운서 김연진입니다. 네, 만나서 반갑습니다. 그리고 이렇게 뜻깊은 자리에 함께하게 돼 정말 영광으로 생각합니다. 최근 4차 산업혁명을 모티브로 많은 논의가 이곳저곳에서 이루어지고 있습니다. 이런 새로운 변화 속에서 지식재산도 그 중요성이 더욱더 커져가고 있는데요. 따라서 이번 심포지엄은 미국과 일본, 중국 등 주요국의 4차 산업혁명 관련 동향과 이에 대비하는 지식재산 정책 제도의 변화를 공유함으로써 미래의 한국이 4차 산업혁명에 일조할 수 있는 지식재산 정책 방향성에 대해서 여러 전문가들을 모시고 함께 논의하고자 이 자리가 마련이 됐습니다. 자 그럼 지금부터 2017년 지식재산 국제 심포지엄의 개회식을 시작하겠습니다. 네 고맙습니다. 먼저 오늘 개회식 이제 개회사로 시작해 보도록 하겠습니다. 안대진 한국지식재산연구원장님의 개회사를 청해 보도록 하겠습니다. 연구원장님 무대로 모시겠습니다. 여러분 큰 박수로 환영해 주십시오. 한국지식재산연구원장 안대진입니다. 박부신 가운데서 4차 산업혁명과 지식재산권 제도의 미래를 주제로 개최하는 2017년 지식재산 국제 심포지엄에 참석을 오늘 하기로 되어 있는 특허청장님이신 성육모 특허청장님, 홍익표 국회의원님은 피치 못할 사정으로 영상 메시지를 보내주셨습니다만서도 조금 뒤에 보실 겁니다. 감사를 드리고 내빈 여러분들께도 감사의 말씀을 드립니다. 돌이켜보면 인류 역사에 있어서 변화의 중심에 항상 새로운 기술의 등장과 혁신이 자리하고 있었고 새로운 기술의 등장은 우리 경제, 사회, 문화 전반에 큰 변화를 가져왔습니다. 지난 다보스 포럼에서의 4차 산업혁명이라는 하두는 전 세계의 산업구조 및 시장 경제 모델에 커다란 변화를 일으키고 있으며 지식 재산 분야에 있어서도 지금까지와는 다른 제도를 요구하고 있습니다. 특허청과 한국 지식 재산 연구원은 이러한 흐름에 발맞추어 주요국의 4차 산업 혁명 동향과 지식 재산 전략을 살펴보고 우리 지식 재산 정책과 대응 방안을 논의하고자 이번 심포지엄을 개최합니다. 미국, 독일, 일본, 중국 등 주요국은 수년 전부터 제조 부활을 목표로 다각적이고 다면적인 정책 수립과 지원을 통해 4차 산업혁명을 준비해오고 있으며 특히 지식재산 부분에서 미국과 독일은 민간의 적극적인 참여로 일본과 중국은 정부 차원의 정책으로 추진하고 있습니다. 오늘 심포지엄에서는 한국 미국, 중국, 일본, 대만 등 다섯 국가의 저명한 지식재산 분야 전문가 분들을 모시고 4차 산업혁명과 지식재산 제도에 대한 발표 및 토론을 진행하게 됩니다. 이를 통해 4차 산업혁명을 대비한 우리 지식재산 관련 현황을 파악하고 더 나아가 정부 차원의 전략을, 전략 마련을 논의할 수 있는 기회가 되기를 진심으로 바랍니다. 다시 한번 연사분들 그리고 이 자리를 준비해 주신 관계자 여러분의 노고에 감사드리며 참석자 여러분 모두에게도 진심으로 감사의 인사를 드립니다. 감사합니다. 네, 원장님 좋은 말씀 고맙습니다. 지식재산과 관련해서 정부 차원의 전략을 논의하는 그런 뜻깊은 자리가 되면 좋겠다라는 좋은 말씀 해주셨습니다. 다시 한번 원장님께 여러분 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. 네, 
이번에는 성윤모 특허청장님의 환영사가 있겠습니다. 앞서 우리 원장님께서 말씀하신 것처럼 오늘 국회 일정으로 인해서 부득이하게 참석하지 못하셨습니다. 대신 우리 성윤모 특허청장님을 영상으로 만나보도록 하겠습니다. 영상 함께 봐주시죠. 안녕하십니까. 특허청장 성윤모입니다. 먼저 국회 일정으로 직접 참석하지 못하고 이렇게 영상으로 말씀드리게 되어 죄송합니다. 오늘 4차 산업혁명과 지식재산의 미래라는 주제로 열리는 2017년 지식재산 국제 심포지움에 참석해 주신 여러분 모두 감사합니다. 특히 기조 연설자이신 루이스 아커블럼 유럽통합특허법원 준비위원회 부의장님과 장광량 중국인민대학 교수님을 비롯한 국내 연사분들께 감사의 말씀을 드립니다. 세계는 지금 4차 산업혁명이라는 거대한 변화를 맞이하고 있습니다. 그간의 세 차례 산업혁명 과정에서 알수 있듯이 4차 산업혁명 시대에도 지식재산을 선점한 국가와 기업이 주도권을 갖게 될 것입니다. 현재 미국 등 주요 국가에서는 4차 산업혁명에 대응하고자 다양한 지식재산 정책을 추진하고 있습니다. 대한민국 정부도 4차 산업혁명에 체계적으로 대비하기 위하여 종합적인 대응 방안을 마련하고 있습니다. 대통령직 속 4차 산업혁명위원회가 지난달에 출범하였고 지난주에는 우리 특허청에서도 새 정부의 지식재산 분야 마스터 플랜이라 할수 있는 4차 산업혁명 시대의 지식재산 정책 방향을 발표하였습니다. 내외 기빈자 여러분, 오늘 심포지움은 한국을 비롯한 미국, 일본, 중국 등 주요 국가에서 4차 산업혁명에 대응하여 진행하고 있는 주요 정책들과 그 방향을 공유하고 논의하는 뜻깊은 자리가 될 것입니다. 행사 준비를 위해 노력해 주신 관계자 여러분께 감사드리며 이 자리에 함께해 주신 모든 분들의 무궁한 발전과 건승을 기원합니다. 마지막으로 직접 참석하지 못해 죄송하다는 말씀을 다시 한번 드립니다. 감사합니다. 네, 여러분 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. 네, 청장님께서 이렇게 영상으로 대신 메시지를 전해주셨습니다. 좋은 말씀 고맙습니다. 네, 이번에는 홍익표 국회의원님의 축사가 있겠습니다. 역시 홍익표 의원님께서도 바쁘신 국회 일정으로 인해서 참석이 어려우셔서 역시 영상으로 대신 전해주셨습니다. 지금부터 영상 함께 만나보겠습니다. 네, 안녕하십니까. 더불어민주당 홍익표 의원입니다. 우선 2017년 지식재산 국제 심포지엄 개최를 진심으로 축하드립니다. 이 행사를 준비하는 데 많은 노력과 수고를 아끼지 않으신 특허청 및 지식재산연구원 관계자분들께 존경과 감사 인사를 드리고 싶습니다. 이번 행사가 벌써 일곱 번째입니다. 2011년부터 진행된 행사인데요. 그동안 많은 전문가분들께 함께해 주셨고 국제 지식재산 보호와 육성에 관련된 좋은 제안과 정책 방향을 제시해 주신 것잘 알고 있습니다. 특히 이번 행사는 4차 산업혁명을 중심으로 지식재산과 관련된 많은 국가들이 경쟁이 심해지고 더불어서 보호 육성도 강조되고 있습니다. 오늘 국제 심포지움을 통해서 많은 전문가 분들께서 의견을 주신 내용들은 필요하다면 정책에 그리고 관련된 법과 제도를 정비하는 데 최대한 반영하도록 하겠습니다. 특히 오늘 함께해 주신 미국, 일본, 중국 그리고 유럽의 많은 전문가 분들께 어, 감사 인사를 드리고 싶습니다. 어, 세, 전 세계적으로 국 지식재산과 보호와 육성 그리고 표준화와 관련된 어, 많은 국제협력이 더욱 중요해지고 있습니다. 아마 오늘 여기 함께 해주신 분들도 그러한 뜻을 어, 함께 공유하고 있으라고 생각합니다. 여러분들이 주신 소중한 의견을 바탕으로 해서 저희들도 어, 국제사회와 협력할 수 있는 분야를 찾아가도록 하겠습니다. 다시 한번 이번 행사에 함께 해주신 모든 분들께 감사와 존경 인사를 드리고 싶습니다. 어, 원래 어, 현장에서 제가 축사를 했어야 되는데 어, 국회 일정 관계상 영상 축사로 대신하게 된 것을 매우 아쉽게 생각합니다. 여러분 감사합니다. 네, 역시 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. 네, 홍익표 의원님께서 이렇게 또 좋은 말씀 전해주셨습니다. 전문가 의견을 반영해서 국제사회와 협력할 수 있는 방안을 찾아보겠다라고 해주셨는데요. 좋은 말씀 고맙습니다. 네, 이번에는 정완용 국가지식재산위원회 지식재산전략기획단장님의 축사가 있겠습니다. 앞으로 모시겠습니다. 여러분 큰 박수로 맞이해 주시기 바랍니다. 
안녕하십니까 국가지식재산위원회 지식재산전략기획단장 정완용입니다. 먼저 4차 산업혁명과 지식재산권 제도의 미래를 주제로 한 오늘 지식재산 국제심포지움 개최를 진심으로 축하드립니다. 아, 바쁘신 와중에서도 영상 축하 어, 인사를 보내주신 홍익표 의원님, 성윤모 특허청장님과 그리고 오늘 심포지움을 준비해 주신 안대진 한국지식재산연구원장님, 루이스 아커블럼 유럽통합특허법인 아, 법원 보호의장님을 비롯하여 미국, 중국, 일본, 대만 등지에서 오늘 값진 강연과 토론을 위해 참석해 주신 많은 국내외 지식재산 전문가 여러분 그리고 내외 기빈 여러분 이런 뜻깊은 자리에서 어, 만나 뵙게 된 것을 매우 기쁘게 생각합니다. 오늘날 우리는 인공지능 사물인터넷을 기반으로 기술과 산업이 지능적으로 빠르게 연결되고 융합되는 제4차 산업혁명 시대를 맞이하고 있습니다. 여러분께서도 잘 아시겠지만 지난해 4차 산업혁명 시대의 도래를 선언한 다보스 포럼에서는 강하고 유연한 지식재산 제도를 4차 산업혁명 시대의 성자의 조건으로 강조한 바 있습니다. 이러한 시대의 흐름 속에서 창업 및 기업 경영에 있어 고품질 지식재산을 확보하고 이에 대한 치열한 전략을 수립하는 것은 이제 선택이 아닌 필수가 되었다고 할수 있겠습니다. 글로벌 기업들은 시장을 선점하기 위해서 M&A, 라이센싱 등을 통해서 앞다투어 지식재산권을 확보하고 경쟁기업을 대상으로 적극적으로 이를 활용하고 있습니다. 이렇듯 전 세계는 치열한 지식재산 경쟁에 돌입하였고 지식재산 경쟁 우위를 확보하지 못한 기업은 더 이상 미래를 담보하기 어려울 것입니다. 이러한 시점에서 오늘 4차 산업혁명과 지식재산권 제도의 미래를 주제로 한 국제심포지움은 아주 시의적절하고 유의미한 행사라고 생각합니다. 미국, 일본 등 선진국들은 이미 4차 산업혁명에 대비한 지식재산 전략을 강화하고 있습니다. 미국의 경우 2015년 연방 차원의 최초, 최초의 영업비밀보법을 제정한 바 있고 지난 8월에는 미, 트럼프 미국 대통령이 중국에 대한 지식재산권 침해 조사를 명령하는 등 강력한 기술 보호 정책을 추진하고 있습니다. 또한 일본과 EU의 경우에도 제4차 산업혁명에 대비한 지식재산 정책을 핵심 아젠다로 채택하고 있습니다. 우리나라 역시 이러한 국제적인 추세에 대응하기 위해서 다양한 지식재산 정책을 추진, 수립 추진하고 있습니다. 국가지식재산위원회는 지난 12월 4차 산업혁명을 선도할 국가지식재산 경쟁력 확보라는 비전 아래 제2차 국가지식재산 기본계획을 마련하였습니다. 향후 5년간 동계획을 충실히 이행하여 혁신성장을 주도하고 또한 중소벤처 창업이 활성화되며 우리 기업들이 강한 지재권을 무기삼아 글로벌 시장에서 세계적인 기업들과 어깨를 나란히 할수 있도록 특허청, 문체부 등 관계부처와 함께 적극 노력하겠습니다. 내 네, 기분 여러분, 저는 많은 기업과 관련 전문가들이 모여 함께 지혜와 정보를 나누는 오늘 이 자리가 우리 기업들이 글로벌 경쟁력을 갖추고 우리나라가 지식재산 강국으로 도약하는 데큰 도움이 되리라 생각합니다. 이번 행사를 준비해 주신 한국지식재산연구원 관계자 여러분들께 다시 한번 감사를 드리며 여러분 모두의 건강과 행복을 기원합니다. 감사합니다. 네, 말씀 고맙습니다. 정완용 국가지식재산위원회 지식재산전략기획단장님의 축사 함께 하셨습니다. 아, 이번 심포지엄이 4차 산업혁명을 맞이해서 굉장히 의미가 있다. 그리고 지재권을 무기 삼아서 우리 기업이 글로벌, 글로벌 기업으로 거듭나길 바란다는 좋은 말씀 전해주셨습니다. 다시 한번 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. 네, 좋은 말씀 고맙습니다. 그럼 지금부터 루이스 아커블럼 유럽통합특허법원 준비위원회 부의장님의 기조 연설이 있겠습니다. 루이스 아커블럼 부의장님께서는 룩셈부르크 대사관 상공회의소 임원을 거쳐 현재 유럽통합특허법원 부의장으로 재직 중이십니다. 여러분, 큰 박수로 맞이해 주십시오. Please come forward. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honored to be here, and I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. I'm from the very small country of Luxembourg in the middle of Europe, where the Court of Appeal of the future uh, Unified Patent Court will be. As vice chair of the 25 countries 
preparatory committee. I'm charged with setting up the Unified, Un Unified Patent Court, and I have coordinated the facilities work stream, and I'm in charge of the corporate functions interim team. Fourth industrial revolution, we're all looking forward towards a smart future, we hope. We all realize today that a lot of things need to change. We must live smarter and more sustainable. We are only the custodians of our earth, temporary keeper for the coming generations. This has also been the ground thinking in my government's action plan for the fourth industrial revolution. Industrial revolution in Europe and the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg initiated by my Ministry of Economy in collaboration with the Chamber of Commerce and a movement called Inspiring More Sustainability of Luxembourg. This strategic study was performed on the Industrial Revolution and it was presented a year ago in Luxembourg. In short, the government wants that the economy gets smart. The development must move on a national scale that affects every aspect of everyday life. According to this model, information and communication technologies, the internet of things, renewable energy, and new means of transport ought to converge in a smart network. The aim of this strategic study commissioned by the government is to make the existing economic model more sustainable and interconnected. The Grand Duchy embarks on this on a national scale. Representing every socio-economic sector, more than 300 people were actively involved for a year, taking part in nine working parties focusing on the challenging regarding energy, mobility, construction, food, industry, finance, the smart economy, the circular economy, and the prosumer and social model. Luxembourg is a small country, as you might know. Considering we only have about 400,000 inhabitants, having 300 people in the study is quite a large ratio. All the information on one single site. The result of the process takes form of a full, detailed study that reviews the country's socioeconomic characteristics and proposes real actions and tools, including a range of strategic measures and projects for preparing the country, its society, and its economy for the embarking on the process on this industrial revolution. The government organizes large-scale consultation of the principal institutions, including Economic and Social Council, the Higher Council for Sustainable Development, and a number of organizations and platforms representing young, the young generation, such as the Youth, youth Parliament. This involvement will then lead to a final consultation debate on the study at the Parliament. The government will set up a mode of governance that takes into account and coordinates the various needs of all the parties involved so that there can be a discussion on any measures that could be adopted as a, of the, as a result of the proposals made in the study. The legislative, regulatory and technical measures to be adopted and any flagship projects to be carried out will be discussed on platforms that already exist such as the National Council for Sustainable Construction, etc. The concrete measures, the government program, if you want, are mainly nine points. It's a construction of a national energy internet, smart power grids, and enforcing the use of smart appliances that intercommunicate, so it can be very crucial in power outages, for instance. Promotion of electrically propelled mobility and a launch of program for emission-free personal vehicles. For instance, car sharing stations in Luxembourg run with only electrical cars. A gradual introduction of mobility as a service, which represents an ecosystem for sustainable mobility in which individuals using a multimodal approach select a combination of modes of transport best suited to their everyday needs. Getting to work in Luxembourg using only public transport can include bike share, train, and a cable car. The population in Luxembourg triples during the daytime, so it's needless to say that we are on the verge of traffic infraction and all possible alternative solutions must be considered. Uh, they want to carry out a flagship project to demonstrate the socioeconomic contribution made by smart, sustainable, circular neighborhoods or towns. An establishment of roadmap for sustainable food production based on transparency and trust. 
the European, the European consumer is rightly so tired of food scandals and food waste. The development of a co-implanted technological platform for industry and public research. It's competition, but it's also a scale, economy of scale. The Luxembourg Sustainable Development Finance Platform has been created to create a coordinated crowdfunding platform. The implementation of infrastructure offering the necessary capacity in the field of high performance computing and finally promoting the circular economy by public contracts. Not just economic considerations for public procurement but also sustainability and uh, life circles. To achieve all this in real uh, revolution, you obviously need public support and the citizens involved. The government is aiming for this by various public presentations and following up so that only last month, a year after this study was uh, presented, there was a public meeting of the Strategic Monitoring Committee. And this, this year, this time it was another ministry, not the uh, Ministry of Economy, but the Minister of Higher Education and Research. And there were also uh, trade unions, professional chambers and civil society included in the project. The Strategic Monitoring Committee oversees and centralizes the work of the various thematic platforms, which are responsible for analyzing discussion and, if necessary, deepening the various measures and proposals emerging from the program that was launched last year. The collective process initiated since then and the implementation of associated governance has made it possible to bring, bring together 350 socioeconomic actors across eight platforms. The interim review of the work was presented by the relevant ministers and the strategic monitoring committee and the various platforms made the progress report highlighting the measures and projects underway while presenting the next steps considered. So a new thematic platform was introduced and dedicated to the health sector. Economics of space. Coming from a small country, very interlinked economically, politically, geographically, well, on all levels actually, we are obviously dependent on our neighbors and mobility is a key ingredient. Like I said, we have a large influx of commuters every day. And we are now raising our eyes to the sky and into the space. I don't know if we're starting the fifth industrial revolution, but as the po poles melt and new land is accessible, so does the space become more within reach. Some of today's international space laws was drawn up long ago, well before the prospect of harnessing space resources had become a realistic option. The idea of using space resources was already around when the 1967 Outer Space Treaty was concluded at a time when the United States and the former Soviet Union were competing to reach the moon. The treaty bans countries from appropriating celestial outer space bodies, including the moon. However, no international legislation so far has set rules about ownership of metals, minerals, and other resources that may be found there. This legal uncertainty now needs clarification. Investors, companies, and their customers rightfully expect certainty if they are to commit significant resources, human, material, and financial, to long-term projects. Luxembourg is the first European country and the second country worldwide after the United States to offer a legal framework that secures proper rights for space resources. As more countries develop their own legal framework, Luxembourg is ready to join. The Luxembourg-based SES, the European Satellite System, provides the largest, um, the largest provider for satellite-based communication in the world provides reliable, secure satellite and ground communication solutions, pushing for further breakthroughs in connectivity and their impact for people worldwide. Building a new spacecraft or servicing existing ones in the weightlessness of space could be more economic if the necessary resources are already close at hand, and those resources could serve as well as the basic materials for additive additive manufacturing in the space of a variety of critical equipment and parts. 
Luxembourg provides a unique legal, regulatory and business environment enabling private investors and companies to explore and use space resources. The identification and utilization of space resources is fast becoming a reality, driven by a revolution in space technology, accelerating exploration of outer space and the eventual scarcity of certain resources on Earth. Building on its long history at the forefront of the commercial satellite communication industry, Luxembourg aims to play a leading role in the exploration and utilization of these resources. So, back to Earth and a few words about the Unified Patent Court. A year ago, we were still a bit uncertain after the vote in the UK of the ex Brexit. However, they decided to go ahead and we put up full speed ahead again. In June this year, we got a new blow through our preparations when the German Constitutional Court asked the German president to hold off on signing the bill voted in the Bundestag. Now we're looking to early spring, hoping for a decision that, we could, that the court will not take the case to a full hearing. So what we have achieved so far, we have 14 ratifications and more in the pipeline. So by the time Germany and the UK finalizes their process, we will launch the system with closer to 20 participating countries, which will of course further strengthen the jurisdiction. The rules of procedures have been completed and agreed on by the preparatory committee. The procedures ensure that there is a smooth and equal whenever, wherever the suits are lodged. The plaintiff can choose in which court to lodge the complaint and al thus also the language to use. We have 842 candidates who have applied to become a judge. For the first year, there will not be so many full-time employed judges, but a large pool of them and around 100 judges will be working in the system from all participating countries. And we have a very performative uh, case management system. The, the IT working group has been working incessantly and we are now very pleased to announce a major milestone in the implementation of the system. Since August of this year and until the court is launched, users have access to the latest CMS version, which has been tailored for the preparation of the Sunrise opening, with emphasis on interrelated opt-out functionalities. All the premises have been identified and are being readied. The UPSA will have courts in 14 different locations. We will have uh, arbitration mediation centers, well, and we will have a, a training center in, Bu in Budapest. So, the timeline, when? That is the big question. We're hoping, like I said, for early spring next year, and we hope to be ready for takeoff. I thank you for attention. Thank you very much for your impressive speech. 네, 이렇게 해서 우리 아커 블럼 부의장님께서 좋은 말씀 전해 주셨습니다. 아, 이렇게 새로운 변화에 앞서서 룩셈부르크 정부의 프로그램과 또 통합 특허 법원의 준비 사항에 대해서 간략하게 말씀해 주셨는데요. 좋은 말씀 고맙습니다. 자, 이번에는 장광량 인민대학 교수님의 기조 연설을 청해 보도록 하겠습니다. 우리 장광량 교수님께서는 베이징시 제1중급 인민법원 판사 겸 연구위원장 그리고 재판사법위원회 위원 미국 존마시아 로스쿨 겸임 교수직을 거쳐서 중국 인민대학 법학원 교수로 재직 중이십니다. 네, 앞으로 모시겠습니다. 여러분 큰 박수로 맞이해 주십시오. Please come forward. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First, I'd like to give my sincere thanks to the host and the organizer of this symposium for having me here. Uh, today, I will share with you my understanding uh, and observation on the two issues. The first is the fourth industrial revolution and its influence. The second will be China's IT policy in response to the fourth industrial revolution. First, uh, the concept of the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution is a scientific and a technological revolution following the steam technology revolution, the power technology revolution, and the digital revolution. And as for the background of the fourth industrial revolution, 
The first is that after the 2008 international financial crisis, the developed countries implemented a strategy of reindustrialization to reshape new advantages of manufacturing and accelerate the advancement of a new framework for global trade and investment. Most countries began speeding up technological innovation and promoting new breakthroughs in artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, uh, nanotechnology, the internet of sin, cloud computing, autonomous vehicle, and 3D printing. Resources and env environmental constraints continue to increase. The intensive development uh, mode that mainly rely on the resource input and the scale expansion is unsustainable. Adjustment to the structure, transformation, and upgrading and quality improvement are needed. The character Risk of fourth industrial revolution. First, the technology involved in the fourth industrial revolution is uh, the fourth industrial revolution is a new technological revolution represented by the internet industrialization, industrial intelligence, uh, industrial integration, and primarily includes artificial intelligence, clean energy autonomous vehicle technology, quantum computing, visual reality by technology, and among others. From this, we can see that for the first three industrial uh, revolution, it's mainly related to a single technology. But for the fourth industrial rev revolution, uh, quite a few technologies are involved. Secondly, the fourth industrial revolution will create creates a kind of a machine superman or a super robot. Uh, when we look back at the first three industrial revolution, we can find one thing in common, that is the machine substituted human power. Uh, whether for the first industrial revolution or the, for the second or third revolution, we, we can find that. But uh, since the fourth industrial revolution uh, involved so many technology, especially uh, artificial intelligence technology, uh, more powerful machine will be created. This kind of machine that will take, uh, substitute the brains of human beings uh, at least to some degree. This kind of machine, we call them uh, super robot or super machine. In the following, I've take, uh, I will say something about the measures taken by the major countries to respond to the fourth industrial revolution. I just want to take the Germany and China as examples. In Germany, uh, it's uh, called industrial for or digitalization of uh, industrial production. Industrial four in Germany was uh, put forward in 2011 in Hanover Fair Industri uh, Hanover Industry Fair. Uh, fair. Uh, in terms of industrial four, it's referred to a kind of strategy that is to integration of manufacturing with uh, uh, new technologies, such as artificial intelligence and uh, other new technology. It will make the uh, industrial manufacturing much more in the in more intelligent, intelligent way. In China, we adopted a strategy called Made in China 2025. This strategy was put forward in 2011, uh, led by the Ministry of Industry and Information, uh, in collaboration with more than 20 ministries under the State Council. The objective of this, uh, of, uh, this strategy 
it tried to integration with internet plus strategy uh, adopted by the central government of China. Actually, this strategy is not only for uh, the fourth industrial revolution. It's also tried to reshape the traditional industry of China, which tried to uh, boost the development of uh, the traditional industry, such as manufacturing and uh, service industry in China. Next, I have to say something, the influence of the fourth industrial revolution on the intellectual property system. In my opinion, the fourth industrial revolution really uh, uh, have a, uh, some uh, deep challenges on the legal system, especially on the intellectual property system. I just give you a few examples. The first is about the right holders and the right conferred uh, in, times of, uh, in terms of the fourth industrial revolution. I just want to give you one example. Uh, that is uh, called works of contents created or generated by artificial intelligence. Uh, years ago, there is a well-known artificial poet in China called Xiaobing, or literally Little Eyes. It's published, it's created and published a lot of poems. And actually there is a compilation of a poem uh, written by the artificial poet called Xiaobing. And the title of this poem this compilation of poem they called "One Sunlight Lost the Glass Window." Okay, uh, for this, uh, there are a lot of debate in China on whether the poet called uh, created by Xiaobin is uh, original, whether those so-called poem are copyrightable. If it is, which one will be the owner, the holder of the copyright? All those are debatable issues in China. And secondly, the fourth industrial revolution will have influence on the in infringement determination under the patent law. As you know that nowadays, when we determine whether a uh, inf suspected infringing article or process constitutes infringement, that's the one very important element, that is, what will be the purpose of uh, the actor? Uh, in China, we say only when the, uh, ac uh, uh, when the manufacturing or other actions is for the business purpose. That will be regarded as a patent infringement on the patent law of China. But 3D printing will bring new issues as end users, as consumers, if we print in something for our own, for our private use, for our private purpose, will that be a kind of a patent infringement? And I, I think this is an issue for uh, the court in China, maybe for the court in other jurisdictions to consider. And also, as for the determination of uh, process patent, if we use, for example, for uh, we, uh, end users or consumers to execute a process patent to manufacturing something for our own, for our uh, private use, will that be a kind of infringement? Third, as for the tort liability. Tort liability uh, is especially a problem for cloud computing service provider. Should cloud computing provider be liable for third party infringement? In China, actually, we already have this kind of cases. Let on, I will show you one case. Next, 
I will say something about China IP policy in response to the fourth industrial revolution. I will just give you uh, uh, some idea, and I know that uh, my colleague, Professor Wang, will give you a much detailed explanation. First, what will be China's advantages and deficiencies in response to the fourth industrial revolution? In my opinion, that China have the following advantages. For example, from the uh, uh, China adopts the policy of opening up and reform, we already have a big reserve of engineering qualified talents. Secondly, China have, still have a very huge market. And thirdly, the China economy is still in a very good condition. And China is a few economies which have uh, huge savings. And you know, financial funds are very important for the transformation of technolo technological achievement to enterprises development. But China have deficiencies in facing the fourth industrial revolution. The first will be that actually China still a uh, lack of a uh, lot of essential technology. And uh, secondly, I should say that maybe the rules and the laws and policies will restrict the development of uh, new technologies. Second, what will be China's IP policy in response to the fourth industrial revolution? China's IP policy in response to the fourth industrial revolution are reflected in the following governmental document or guidelines. The first is Made in China 2025. In this uh, government, uh, document by the central government, the major uh, objective is to try to uh, transform Made in China into created in China. Uh, secondly, uh, the State Council issued uh, several opinions on speeding up the construction of a strong nation in intellectual property under new circumstances. Thirdly, uh, national intellectual property protection and application planning of the 13th five-year plan was issued also by the State Council. And the fourth, the state, uh, the Supreme Court of China issued outline of the judicial protection of intellectual property rights in China. From all those documents and uh, uh, guidelines, we can find out the characteristic of China's IP policy in response to the fourth industrial revolution. We should say that actually there's no specific IP policy enacted or made for the fourth industrial revolution. Now, uh, uh, speaking from the legislation history of China, we can find that there are few stages. The first stage will be the passive legislation period from 1978 to 1992. In that period, China was, was oppressed, uh, was under great pressure from uh, the major developed countries represented by the United States. At that time, China uh, speeding up the legislation of intellectual property laws and regulations. And uh, after that, from 1992 to 2001, China uh, adjusted as intellectual property legislation to meet the requirement to exceed to get our WTO. And from 21 to 28, China uh, adopt much more flexible intellectual property legislation policy, and after that, a very negative adjustment period took place, especially in 2008, China issued the outline of a national intellectual property strategy. Okay. From, uh, since 2008, uh, China's IP policy, to, uh, we can find the 
out that the Chinese government have taken great importance to the IP enforcement, from which we found that Chinese government emphasized intellectual property protection. They said that, uh, even the leader of China said that the infringer must pay price for infringement. And secondly, they emphasized the important rule of intellectual property in innovation-driven development. And you know, maybe you know that China adopted other strategy, which called uh, innovation-driven development strategy. And uh, also the central government uh, adopted a kind of policy which we called mass entrepreneurship and uh, innovation, which encourage all citizens and enterprises to innovate, even though it's a, a kind of a dispute uh, whether everybody is qualified to innovate. It's still anyhow. The third will be uh, is that pay attention to the layout of intellectual property in key industry, especially uh, layout of intellectual property in foreign countries. And uh, the fourth will be regulate the, the abuse of intellectual property. Uh, with the uh, much more emphasis on the enforcement of intellectual property, we found out some uh, multinational companies they have abused their intellectual property in China, which really uh, represent a kind of obstacle to innovation. And uh, recent years, uh, the administrative organs as well as the court, they have strengthened the regulation on the abuse of intellectual property rights. Maybe you know that in 2015, uh, a, a foreign company, a multinational company, was fined, was sectioned by the uh, development and a a development and plan commission under the state council for abusing uh, SEP, standard essential patent, and a fine the over six point million, billion RMB. Third, China's IP policy partly uh, related to the fourth industrial revolution. Notably, as I already mentioned, China had not developed an IP policy specifically for the fourth industrial revolution. Next, I want to show you a few judicial precedents on the key technologies in the fourth industrial revolution. The first one is relating to a uh, big data. Uh, in this case, the plaintiff is the Wayman company and the defendant is the Toyo Technology Company. And the uh, defendant was operator of the social media called Meme. Meme in Chinese literally means connections. Okay. When the defendant, uh, but the defendant required the users of uh, this uh, uh, APP to, uh, uh, while they register as users of this APP, they must upload to the system uh, the connection information of the user, uh, including their nickname, their avatar, the other information using uh, Weibo.com. Weibo.com is a kind of uh, service provided by the plaintiff. And in this case, the, the court found the defendant constituted the unfair, unfair competition because the court believed the acts of the defendant really do harm to the information security of the uh, public and also infringe the competitive interests of the plaintiff. The second case is re, uh, related to uh, clouding computing. Just as I mentioned before, that in this case, the plaintiff is a local joy technology company, which is operator of uh, internet game titled My Name is MT. 
And in this case, uh, there is a third uh, party infringer who also inf uh, operate, operate an infringing uh, game on the internet using the clouding server service provided by Alivin Computing Company. In this case, the court found Alivin Computing Company, namely the defendant, should be liable for the third party infringement uh, on the reason that the defendant should adopt a reasonable and appropriate and also effective measures to help the uh, plaintiff, uh, the right holders, to deal with uh, this kind of very serious infringement. Now, uh, I will give you my observation and kind of a conclusion. Uh, in facing the fourth industrial revolution, actually there are different opinions on the status of China. I remember Claude uh, Schwab, the executive uh, chairman of the Econo Economic Forum, they said that a few years ago, he pointed out that China will be uh, the leaders in the fourth industrial revolution. But some Chinese scholars questioned. They put forward a, a such kind of doubt. Uh, they also said that maybe China will miss the fourth industrial revolution. Actually, I don't agree to either of those kind of opinions. In my opinion that uh, in facing the fourth industrial revolution, uh, all countries will participate in this kind of a revolu uh, revolution. Uh, that uh, certainly China will be part of it, but whether China and other economies will lead in the fourth uh, industrial revolution will totally depend on the laws and the policies, including the intellectual property policies. Whether they're open, are reasonable and up to date. Uh, that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your informative speech. 네, 이렇게 해서 우리 장 교수님께서 또 어, 발표를 해 주셨습니다. 아, 제 4차 산업혁명과 관련해서 지식재산제도의 어, 미래를 주제로 발표를 해 주셨는데요. 4차 산업혁명과 관련해서 중국의 IP 정책과 관련한 또 좋은 말씀 해 주셨습니다. 다시 한번 발표해 주신 우리 두 분의 기초 연사자 분들께 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다.